The computational frameworks group that created Idaho National Laboratory's Moose simulation platform resides in a supersized cubicle deemed the hypercube. Computational mathematician Derek Gaston has invited us here to see some of the simulations this beast can perform. So this is the missing pellet surface simulation and what we're looking at is a piece of a pellet here has chipped away either due to some manufacturing defect or um, maybe while it was in transport but a, a piece of the pellet is missing which you can see on the middle pellet there on the left and it's going to cause a high stress state in the cladding in that same area just due to that missing surface there. So you can see the pellets warm up and then they densify. Then later on the pellets actually swell back out because there's fission products building up inside of them and then they'll run into the protective coating, the cladding, and you can see the high stress state build up in the same area where the missing surface is from the inner pellet. Something that's really interesting to uh, the nuclear industry right now because they're trying to understand how these type of defects actually impact their safety margins. We can do studies on what size of a chip would be acceptable, for instance, or maybe if there's a particular shape to a, to a missing surface that causes a, a higher stress state, we could help them understand what that shape is and, and what to look for in their manufacturing process in order to throw out maybe bad pellets. For instance. This is a first-of-a-kind simulation of an entire fuel rod. This was a simulation that was run on our new supercomputer here at INL named Fission. We used the entire supercomputer, all 12,000 processors, for over 24 hours to complete this simulation. We're going to fly down the full length of the rod so that you can get a good understanding of just how immense this calculation really was. There's 320 total pellets here, which is analogous to what is actually in an operating uh, reactor in the United States. This simulation simulates a little bit over a year inside of a reactor, about 14 months. Having these type of high fidelity simulations allows us to understand exactly how a real fuel rod would react inside of a reactor. Specifically, one of the things we were looking at in this simulation is how much the pellet stack would grow due to the thermal expansion and the fission product swelling. So that gives us an idea of design margins, that sort of thing. So this is the multi-scale UO2 fuel rodolet simulation. This is a true multi-scale simulation where the engineering scale, which is on the order of millimeters, is coupled together with the microstructure and they're going to impact each other as time goes on inside the reactor. What we're looking at here is a stack of five nuclear fuel pellets, uh, what we call a rodlet, inside of its protective cladding and that's in the center of the screen here. On the bottom left there's four different microstructure positions that are going to be represented in the center of the middle pellet on the outer edge of the middle pellet and on the center and outer edge of the bottom pellet. And what those are going to show is how the structure of the fuel down on the uh, micrometer level is actually going to be changing while the fuel's in the reactor. In the top left, we're actually showing the thermal conductivity of the nuclear fuel over time at each of those four positions. As the microstructure changes, it'll actually impact one of the basic properties of the material, which is its thermal conductivity, its ability to move heat through the material. As the microstructure evolves, you'll actually see that thermal conductivity go down, and that's really important for understanding how to get energy out of the system, and your safety margins, and a lot of other processes. You'll be able to see the pellets heat up, and then as time runs on in the upper left there, you can see that the microstructure starts to change and it builds up holes or voids inside of the pellets, which drives the thermal conductivity down, and that ends up impacting what happens on the engineering scale and mechanics. These types of simulations give us a better understanding of how the changes to the microstructure impact uh, what happens on the engineering scale. If we're trying to understand what happens to a new fuel design, then before we ever put that fuel in a reactor, 
we can run these types of simulations to try to get an understanding of how it's going to respond, even for a new fuel that has never been tested before. This is the RAT simulation, the 3D flow simulation. The rectangular prism that we're looking at here is a slab of bedrock in the ground. And what we're going to be looking at is if we were to inject some chemicals into this bedrock and have them try to flow through it, how would they be flowing through and reacting with each other and reacting with the rock? You can see the chemicals start to come into the system and we're watching a reaction front here and we're watching it move through the bedrock. You can see that there's a main chemical field that's moving down the bedrock here but also some of the chemical gets trapped because as the chemical reaction occurs it actually ends up shutting off some of the porosity and so some of the chemical gets trapped in the bedrock. These types of simulations are very interesting for instance for chemical spill remediation. Say a truck overturns on the highway and you want to try to understand how those chemicals are going to react with the bedrock and flow through the bedrock and maybe even get into the groundwater. I really appreciate you taking the time to walk us through these simulations, Derek. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. This is Nicole Stricker for Idaho National Laboratory.